What's going on everybody? Armand here, back at it with another video. I know you're probably sick of my videos. Get how many videos does this guy make per week? But this is a big event, so I decided to make a video about it. It's a quick update video about my car. So I have just hit 60,000 miles. Let me show you real quick. So as you can see, I'm at 60,100 miles. So as you can see, this is a big milestone. Not really, it's just an arbitrary number that I chose to make a video about. But I think that at a 60,000 mile mark, you know a little bit about your car. So I decided to make a quick video about my car, what experiences I've had, what I've liked, and what I've disliked. So the first thing I want to talk about are the repairs that I've had on this vehicle. Overall, I would have to say I've had very few repairs on this vehicle, and the concerns about German reliability haven't really affected me. So far, let's knock on wood. So over the 60,000 miles that I've owned this car, I have had probably two major repairs. Let's do a quick pull. I still love that. I still love that. It's just, it's so much fun. So much fun. So the first one you don't know about because I didn't make YouTube videos back then. But the first real issue that I had with this car was the seat, specifically the driver's seat started forming a hole around uh, one of the seams. And I'll show you the seat right now. So that area between some of the cushioning where your butt is sitting, yeah, that area in the stitching was starting to come unloose, which meant I was developing a hole and I was looking inside of my actual seat. You could see the foam they used, you could see all of the cushioning, and it was very disconcerting because this car only had probably about 45,000 miles at that point. So that's when I started Googling it and seeing what the issue was. Well, apparently, I'm not the first one with this issue. It's a common problem with C300s, and honestly, any other C-Class, around my generation. It's something that people had noticed on their cars, some of which were replaced by warranty, some of which were not. So once I found out that warranty might replace it, I ended up calling Mercedes-Benz, and I was able to get it into the service lot before my warranty expired. My warranty expired at 50,000 miles, I was around 48,000. So I was able to get in, I got it fixed. My car went over 50,000 miles before they got the seat in, but they still counted it, which was nice for Mercedes to do. Not every manufacturer would do that. Or maybe they legally have to, I don't know. But I was able to replace my seat for a brand new one with no charge towards me. That's kind of disconcerting though, because this car only had 48,000 miles and its seat was coming apart. Which made me think whether the passenger seat is gonna have the same issue down the line. That was the first real issue I had with this automobile, but I didn't worry too much about it because warranty replaced it. The second issue is something you've probably seen a video about, and I made this a few months ago. But back in September and October, my drive shaft failed. So the part that connects the transmission, the differential to the rear wheels, that part had broken off. It was like literally coming apart. If you want more images, you look at my previous videos, you'll see exactly what happened. But unfortunately, this happened when I was already at 55,000 miles. So warranty wasn't going to replace it. This was an out-of-pocket expense that I did not expect to have. So I had a buddy of mine who's a mechanic look into it and he was able to fix it for me for a lot cheaper, but it was a very expensive part to fix. Now, the first issue with the seat, I can blame Mercedes-Benz because I don't sit with chains in my pockets. I don't have knives in my back pockets. I just sit like a normal person. So the first issue, I will blame Mercedes solely for not engineering their seats well enough to handle the use of 45,000 miles. The second issue with the drive shaft, I might be able to blame myself. Now this car unfortunately is very low to the ground. So when pulling into some spaces, I have nicked the bottom of my car. I'm sorry, but it happens. And when it does, it makes this awful sound. And I think that that might have been the cause of me breaking the drive shaft. You could argue and say Mercedes should have designed that when they were creating the car, but it is partially my fault. Overall, those are the two biggest repairs I've had. Other than having a windshield wiper mechanism break, they really could have just been the cause of changing the windshield or the heavy snow we get in Utah. I haven't really had any other issues with this car. I've replaced the tires a few times, but some of the big repairs like engine, transmission, differential, haven't been touched. I go in every 10,000 miles for my service, and I typically don't pay any more than the service itself because I don't usually have major issues. I haven't replaced the brakes yet. I haven't replaced the transmission oil, and that's not because I'm careless. It's because it doesn't have to be changed yet. I ask at every single service I go into whether that's something that I should look into right now, and they tell me it's not necessary until we check it the next time. So I'm going in for my next oil change in the next few days, and I'll have to see what issues I have with my car. I'll keep you guys updated, but overall I've had a very good experience with the Mercedes C300. 
Thankfully, I haven't had very many issues with my reliability, and the cost of service hasn't been too bad. So for 60,000 miles, I'm pretty satisfied with this vehicle. I think German reliability has definitely improved in the past few years, and this car is just an example of that. Well, I'll keep you guys updated on the upcoming few weeks and what service says, but for now, my 60,000 mile update is kind of boring. This car is held up pretty damn well. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Please like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed the content. And if you have any questions about my Mercedes C300, let me know and I'd be happy to answer them. Catch you guys next time.